We're here in the settings for MLB The Show 24. Today, I'm going to be going over my recommended settings, what I think are the best settings for MLB The Show 24. Feel free to subscribe for daily MLB The Show videos. In the description of this video and maybe even the pinned comment, I'm hoping to have some timestamps just dividing up everything we talk about. So if there's certain settings you're looking for, hopefully you could find it at least a little bit easier. In the comments, feel free to leave any questions you still might have after watching the video about the settings or maybe even your own recommendations recommendations for other players, any settings that maybe I didn't touch on or specific things you might think other people would benefit from knowing, feel free to leave everything like that down in the comment section. Now I'll come back to these other tabs towards the end of the video, but today's main focus are the gameplay settings here for MLB The Show 24. Now we do have some other tabs in this general category. I'm going to touch on those after we go through the user controls and the other settings here for gameplay in MLB 24. So if we press R1, we go to the next tab. After the general settings, we have the control settings, probably the most important settings in my opinion that we're gonna be talking about here in this video. The first one we have is base running interface. You'll notice at the top, it says to select individual base runners, press the left analog stick in the direction of a base runner, and then you tap the base that you want to send them to. This is the setting I always have it on. I'm always using analog select. With this setting, you can also hold L1 to advance all the runners or R1 to return all of them. It's going to be the same thing with tagging up. If you press L1, it's just going to send the guy who's tagging up. It wouldn't send everybody, but if you're holding it down, then it's going to start sending everybody. But I always keep my base running interface on analog select. The other one would be button select, which is where you're holding the base that the runner is on. And then you're going to be tapping any of the directional buttons to send them to that desired base. And then same thing, you're still able to use L1 and R1, but I would recommend analog select. I find it easiest to send the analog stick towards the runner and then press the button to send them to whatever base you want to send them towards. The next option we have here is swing inputs. The first one is buttons. Then we have analog flick. That's going to be where you're moving the right stick up for a normal swing, left or right for a context swing a power swing is going to be pulling down and flicking up you also have analog stride which is pulling the stick down to start the stride and then moving it up to do a swing and before the pitch is thrown then you would press x for a normal swing circle for a contact swing square for a power swing but i'm always using buttons there's x for a normal swing circle for a contact swing and square for a power swing they're going to be a little bit different obviously on xbox but i have mine set to buttons at all time and i'm almost always doing a normal swing i hardly find myself ever doing a contact swing or a power swing i'm almost always doing a normal swing and again my swing input i always have it set on buttons my hitting interface, if you want to be the best MLB The Show player you can, you want to have the most control over your hitting, you're going to want to have your hitting interface set to zone. Directional can be nice because you can influence the direction of the swing, but you're not having nearly as much control. And then timing, this is only based on timing. This is probably going to be for if you really just want to have kind of a fun arcadey experience, I would recommend timing. But for having the most control over your hitting, I would recommend zone hitting. You see these next options, there's directional camera shift. That's gonna be if you have directional, you're able to change those. Same with the hitting indicator. Basically, basically what this is, is if you're using directional and you are choosing the direction you wanna hit the ball, if you have the camera shift on, the camera's gonna move a little bit. And if you have the hitting indicator on, that's gonna be a little arrow showing you what direction you're aiming it at. Again, those are only for directional hitting, so it doesn't matter that they're set to on because with zone hitting, those aren't even gonna be a thing. Now the PCI anchor, the PCI in general is the plate coverage indicator. So when you see PCI, that's referring to the plate coverage indicator and that's going directly with zone hitting. When you're using zone hitting, there's gonna be a PCI on screen that you get to move around. And when the pitch is coming in, you need to move that PCI towards the ball. And when you press swing, the closer that PCI is to the ball, the better contact you're gonna be making. What the PCI anchor is, is you can anchor your PCI to a certain spot in the strike zone. It's divided up into nine spots. You know, there's top left, top right, middle, bottom left. There's nine spots in the strike zone. And you can anchor your PCI to one of those spots. And you can either set this PCI anchor 
to reset every batter. You can have it just last the entire game, last the entire inning. I don't use the PCI Anchor too often. When I do, I just have it reset every batter. And those PCI Anchor dots are just going to be showing you in the strike zone where that PCI will be anchored, where it will be set to if you have it off. You're still going to be able to anchor your PCI. You just won't be able to see the dots that show you exactly where it will be anchored. But you'll be noticing your PCI staying in that spot. So basically, you're using a right-handed hitter, PCI anchor, you have it on, and you would select, say, the top left. You're looking high and inside, righty-righty, and you would have your PCI start in the top left of the zone rather than in the middle of the zone. The middle of the zone is where it's always starting, and the PCI anchor allows you to just start your PCI somewhere else in the strike zone without actually having to move your thumb there. That's just where it's going to be if your hand's completely off the controller. And so all that's going to be for if the PCI anchor is on the preset, you can always turn it off if you don't want to have PCI anchor. And you can also set it to free where that's not going to have the dots. That's going to be you can literally just set it to anywhere in the strike zone. The dots can be kind of nice because it divides the strike zone up for you. But if you really want to be precise and specific with it, you could always set it to free. I usually just keep mine on preset, having those nine specific spots, but you can play around with this, set it how you want. I just would always recommend the preset, but free could be a good option if you're choosing to have it on and you want to be a little bit extra precise with it. Now, we're still talking about the PCI. That's just anchoring it in a certain spot. I always have my PCI indicator. I have it set to on. If you turn it off, even if you're using zone hitting and you set it to off, you still have to move the PCI. The hitting where you don't have to move the PCI, that's going to be directional or timing. Zone hitting, you always have to move that PCI towards the ball. But some people find it distracting to have it on the screen, so they choose to set it to off, which just means you can't see it. I personally like having mine set to on for the PCI center, the very middle of the PCI. You can do circles, diamonds, none or altitude and this is something when you actually go into the game you can notice these changes practice mode franchise online whatever it may be but i always have mine set to diamonds this is going to be very personal preference i'll show you exactly what i use in case you want to copy it you want to try it out but i always have my center set to diamonds and i find that a lot of this just boils down to what you like the best what looks the best to you so my pci center i always have mine set to diamonds my PCI inner, I typically like setting it to wedge. I used to use the wedge PCI way back in MLB 16, so that's what I got comfortable with. And way back in MLB 16, they didn't have an outer PCI. Now, the inner PCI, it's going to be bigger or smaller based on your hitter's contact rating. And the contact rating battles directly with a pitcher's hits per nine rating. So the higher a hits per nine rating for a pitcher, the smaller your PCI is going to be. But the higher your contact rating for a hitter, the bigger your inner PCI is going to be. And pitching clutch, batting clutch, that's going to go in place of the contact for hitters or the hits per nine for pitchers when runners are in scoring position. And again, the contact and the hits per nine, higher contact equals bigger PCI, higher hits per nine is going to shrink that PCI for your opponents and then the outer is going with vision so the inner for a hitter that's going to be determined based on their contact rating and battle with the pitcher's hits per nine and then the outer will be for the hitter's vision this is going to help you with fouling off pitchers with higher vision or lower vision guys are probably going to end up striking out more and you'll notice the outer pci getting bigger or smaller based on the vision of a hitter for my pci outer they didn't have this back in MLB 16, so I always have mine set to none. That's just what I'm used to. Again, a lot of this boils down to personal preference. Same thing with the PCI color. Yellow, white, violet, spring green, red, orange, ocean, magenta, green, cyan, blue, black. I like having mine on yellow. That's just what I typically do. Some people will go 100% for opacity. 20% is going to be the hardest to see but you can still see it a little bit it's not like you're setting it to off i usually keep mine around 70 or 80 i like having a little bit of transparency to it being able to see through it if you have it 100 you're not able to see through it at all so i usually keep mine on 70 and pci fade out you can either choose 
none so the pci doesn't go away at all and this is going to be when the pitcher starts his delivery i keep mine on none but you can also have owner where once the pitcher starts his delivery your owner pci would fade or you could have it set to all or also center and owner inner and owner so you can play around with this i always have mine set to none if you have owner on again this is the one that shows the vision for a hitter a lot of people if they have that owner pci showing they'll also have it fading out where they'll just choose owner so that way you can see the inner and the center still try to get that towards the ball get that towards the pitch being thrown but before the pitch is thrown you kind of see how big of a range you have to foul off the pitch but i always keep my pci fade out set to none but again a lot of this is personal preference but this is the settings i typically use for my pci and i'm using zone hitting here in mlb the show and these are the hitting settings i would recommend for mlb 24 guest pitch i find that this can be fun to play with in road to the show i always have mine set to off and then vibration i think this is also personal preference i like having it on i like feeling the vibration whenever i make contact with the pitch here on my playstation i know a lot of people don't like that so they set it to off again that's going to be personal preference but i always keep mine set to on and these are going to be the settings i would recommend for offense here in control under the gameplay settings and next up we have the defensive settings this includes pitching i didn't expect hitting to take me that long but i really wanted to try to be as specific as possible and just try to explain everything as possible i never know how experienced or inexperienced people watching my videos are going to be so i want to try to be as specific and explain everything at least to the best of my ability and pitching this comes down to personal preference a lot more than hitting does for hitting i 100 percent if you're trying to be as good as possible i would recommend zone hitting having as much control as possible same thing for pitching i would probably recommend pinpoint if you're trying to have as much control as possible i don't think it's as difficult as people might expect i'm hoping to get both hitting and pitching tips videos up where i'll probably go over each pitching interface a little bit more and why i recommend pinpoint why i don't think it's as hard as it might look but this is personal preference you can use pulse if you want to i know a lot of people like pure analog there's always classic where you're just choosing a location and then sending the pitch in and i feel like a fan favorite is a lot of times meter but for me I like pinpoint the most. I feel like it gives me the most control when it comes to pitching. So I would recommend if you can get the hang of it, pinpoint pitching here in MLB 24. The next step is the pitching ball marker. And this is going to show you kind of how the pitch breaks or comes out of the pitcher's hand. The first one we have is Chevron. This gives you some little arrows that display the amount of break for a pitch. And you can either have that just set to on or you can have it set to fade where it's going to go away after a few seconds of you selecting that pitch when you're choosing the location. So if you're wondering, hey, why does my pitch disappear before I throw it? That's probably because you have one of the fade options on. You can also have your pitching ball marker set to off. And I personally prefer pitch trail. They have the fade option for that. But I always use for my pitching ball marker, I have it set to pitch trail. And this shows you the trail of the ball coming out of the pitcher's hand. For me, I feel like I can be a little bit more accurate with the pitch trail versus using Chevron. So I would recommend pitch trail. That's always my personal preference. Pulse meter display, that's impacted if you're using pulse which I would not really recommend, but I know some people do use it, but with my recommended settings, that one's not gonna affect us. Throwing interface, I always recommend button accuracy because this is the one that pops up a little meter above the fielder's head, and it has a yellow zone, a green zone, and I think a red zone. And if you get it in that green zone, you know you're not gonna make an error, but if you're using analog or button, there's still a chance that you're making an error. You don't have as much control over it. So I always recommend button accuracy. That's what I use. And then the accuracy chevrons, this is going to be those arrows under the player's feet. You can have this set to on or off. I always just keep it on. I'm not sure if it really goes with button accuracy. I haven't noticed that in the past. I felt like it's only button or analog, but I'm just going to keep it on for now. I've had comments asking me in the past, how do I cancel throws? And basically you need the throw canceling setting on. And if you have this on, you're able to overwrite 
a throw when the fielder is in his throwing motion all you got to do is repress the initial base button to cancel the throw or you have to press a new button to cancel and then start a throw to a different base so i would recommend keeping throw canceling on it's nice to have the option if you want it to catch position indicator some people use the track ball you can also just completely set it to off i use drifting ball the track ball is going to give you this kind of blue line that you have to use I never really got used to that or got into that, so I always just keep the classic drifting ball. This is that baseball icon that gets bigger the higher the ball is in the air. As it gets closer to the ground, that drifting ball, that baseball icon is going to get smaller. I like using this versus the track ball. I'm not a big fan of that stretched out catch region. I like having the actual baseball image to run towards and it gets smaller as it gets closer to the ground. And then for diving and jumping, I find that it's nice to use two button instead of just the one button because one button it's either R1, R2, it's going to trigger a jump or a dive just based on whatever the computer thinks you should be doing and I'm someone who likes knowing okay if I press R1 boom that's triggering a jump if I press R2 boom that's triggering a dive so I always like to have two button set on and those are my defense control settings a little bit shorter than the hitting ones but this is what I would recommend for defensive settings in gameplay here on MLB the show 24 and under control we also have player lock player lock throwing interface I'm not a big fan of showtime or analog I like to keep this set to button accuracy if I'm playing road to the show or fielding moments throw mapping you can do standard or fielder I typically have this set to fielder. This means if you're a shortstop and you're from the view of the shortstop, you're kind of behind him, then it's going to be based on that view. So square would be first base. And I find this is easiest going from the view of the fielder. So I keep that to fielder. Base running interface. You can either have an analog where you're using the analog stick to advance or return. That's always what I have mine set to. But you can also set it to buttons where you're using L2 or R2 to advance and return. But I always do analog. That's just what feels most comfortable to me in those player lock opportunities. And then for the infield reaction, I like it having set to assist. I'm not a big fan of nothing happening for the player lock infield reactions. I like having assists if I ever have those on. So for the player lock stuff, these are just the ones that I always have. And those are the control settings that I would recommend. We covered the offense, the defense, and then there was just a couple ones for player lock. Next up under settings, we have the camera angles. For pitching, I've always liked to use a view that's behind the pitcher. And if you're using something like broadcast, that's going to be changing based on the stadium. So for a behind the pitcher view, I like to use outfield. This is what I typically have my pitching view set to. I don't think it's too far or too close to the pitcher. I will say a lot of people like to use the exact same view that they use for hitting as they're pitching. So they're always seeing the pitches come in at the same camera angle. So maybe one of the strike zone ones. I know a lot of people will use one of those for their pitching, maybe more zoomed out, maybe something like zoom or fisheye. If you're using one that's going to be from the catcher view, but for pitching, I always have mine set to outfield. That's what I'm using for pitching for hitting. If you're trying to be the best that you can, I would highly recommend one of these strike zone camera angles. Usually I would recommend strike zone two or three or just one is what I use. There's strike zone, strike zone two, strike zone three. Strike zone is pretty much what I've been using since MLB 15. So I've been using it for a long time. It really doesn't feel like time's gone that far. This is going to be personal preference. I would not recommend changing this all the time. I would really try to get one that you really feel comfortable with and get used to that. And again, I would recommend one of the strike zone camera angles. That's going to, in my opinion, give you the best opportunities to be the best hitter that you can be. So maybe one of these three strike zone ones, they also have offset or high, but I personally always use strike zone, just this one without any numbers. That's what I always go towards. The in-play view for offense and defense when the balls are put into play. They have a few different options. They have dynamic, broadcast, retro, medium, and high. I'm always using medium. I get a lot of comments asking me, hey, how do you get that camera angle when the balls hit into play? And I'm using for both the offensive and defensive in-play views. 
I always have mine set to medium. And then for camera movements, when you're in Road to the Show, presentation fan cam, stadium creator, things like that, I always just have mine set to standard, but you can also invert your controls if you want to. But for camera angles, the most important ones, hitting view and pitching view, I like using strike zone for hitting. My personal preference for pitching is outfield, but a lot of people like to use the same one they use for hitting, or you could always use one that ends up being behind the catcher. A lot of people like to do that too, but I like having the pitching view be behind the pitcher because the hitting view is kind of behind the hitter. I like having it switched up like that. And these are the camera settings I would recommend for MLB The Show 24. The next tab for settings we have is the display tab. The first thing we have is fielding aids. If you set this to on, there's a note that says in online play, this setting is automatically turned off. So I just always keep this off because I play a lot of online. So I like having things the same usually between offline and online. It depends, but for fielding aids, franchise road of the show, I don't usually ever have those on. If you want to turn on the base for play icon, the catch position indicator, route to ball indicator, things like that, you can have them turned on, but I always have the fielding aids set to off. Computer pitch suggestion. I like having this set to on during pitching. This will make it so the computer gives you suggestions for the pitch type and location. This is not going to happen if you're playing a game online, but it's going to happen in single player stuff, in offline stuff. So I like having this on. It's just kind of fun for me to have the CPU call some pitches so I don't have to always be thinking about myself what to call. So I always turn the CPU pitch suggestion to on. If you're using dynamic difficulty updates, I always just keep mine on progress so that it's displaying an update anytime progress is being made. In-game notifications, that's going to be XP, stats and road of the show, things like that. I always keep that on. If you want a more immersive experience, you might want to turn it off, but that's going to be like the XP attributes, things like that popping up in the top left. In franchise and road to the show, I do like turning the strike zone off every now and then. Because I play a lot of online, I always keep the strike zone set to on, but sometimes I'll go in and turn it off for specific modes when I'm playing the game. Hot zones, I usually keep those off. I think it can be kind of fun to have them on. You can see red if a hitter's good, blue if a hitter's bad in that zone, but I usually just keep those off. I don't really have them playing ever. It doesn't really impact online play, so I just keep them off. The pitch information, I like having this. This is the final pitch location and the display after a pitch is thrown. I think this is kind of the stuff you see in the bottom left. I like seeing that stuff, so I set it to on. For franchise, again, this is one of those things where for more immersive experience, it can be kind of fun to set it to off, but I'm always keeping the pitch info on. Pitch select displays, if you're holding down R2, you can just choose what it shows you. It can show you pitch descriptions, it can show you batter attributes, or you could have it completely set to off. I usually keep it on pitch descriptions right here. Confidence and energy bars, that's gonna be around the pitch selection. I like having that set to on. I like being able to see the confidence of my pitcher. I like being able to see the energy that he has left. Same thing with the pitch feedback. I always keep this on, pinpoint pitching, meter pitching, whatever you're using. This allows you to see how you're doing. You can kind of get some live feedback to see, okay, what do I need to adjust? Was I too early? Was I too late on the release? So I always keep pitch feedback on even after I've been playing for so many years now. It's nice to see feedback based on how I'm doing. The batter controls display. When you're holding down R2, it can either display minimal information, no information at all, or it could display all the pitch information like we saw while we were pitching, having that on for the batter controls display. I typically set this on minimal. I'm not checking it too often. A lot of times I'm just checking it to see what pitches a pitcher has. So I keep mine on minimal. The Swede swing feedback, it's nice to have this on. It's the same thing as the pitch feedback, bottom left. You're kind of able to see for hitters, this is gonna be popping up around like the meter, the pinpoint, whatever you're using. But the swing feedback, this is gonna be popping up in the bottom left or the bottom right sometimes. I don't know if they change it to always the bottom left, but this is where you'll see the timing. This is where you'll see if you're using zone hitting in a PCI, how close or far away to the ball you were. So I like having this on so I know exactly how I'm doing, where I can improve, where I missed. It's nice having this set to on. The next thing we have is the off the ball ribbon. And this is gonna be when a ball is in the air, you're able to see where it's going to come off the wall. So where you should have your fielder set up, You'll notice if you turn this on, it says in online play, the settings automatically turned off. 
So I always just keep this off, but in certain modes, it can just be nice to have this on so you know exactly where to place your fielder if the ball is going to be bouncing off the wall. Base running diamond, this is up in the top right of the screen. I always have this set to on so you can see where the runners are on the bases running around for a more immersive experience. It can be fun to have it off, but I just keep that set to on. The player name display, this is going to be under the player marker when they're in the field. If you want to see the player's name when you're controlling a fielder, you have this set to on. The score bar display in the bottom right of the screen, you are able to turn this off. I always just have it set to on. I don't know if I've ever turned off the score bar in MLB The Show. The game log order, this is going to be in the settings. I always keep mine on chronological. If you go to the game log, you can see all the events that have happened, the outs, hits, run scoring plays, things like that. It lists you out what happened during the game in text form. I keep it on chronological, so the stuff that happened first is at the top. If I scroll down to the bottom, it's going to be happening at the bottom. And then the last two things we have on the display tab are some road of the show things. The first one is a base for play prompt. This is going to show you the recommended base to throw to. And it's pretty much simulating your teammates yelling, hey, this is where you should throw. And it's going to be the same thing for base running. It's going to suggest what base you should run to. A lot of times I'll probably turn these things off. I think I can kind of make my own decisions and I would rather do just that and then have someone telling me. But it's always something you could have turned on but I would keep mine set to off personally. The first option we have here is the gameplay style. Online play is automatically set to competitive, so that's what I always have mine set on, but you can always choose casual. That's just a fun pick up and play experience. There's a simulation that should provide the closest to an authentic MLB experience that will play true to the player ratings and team settings, but competitive is what I have mine on since that's what online play is set to. For the hitting and pitching difficulty, a lot of times I'll have mine on Legend, and that's just for practice mode if you're trying to get some extra reps in. I usually recommend playing on the highest difficulty. You can really have these set to whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever you want, but I typically have my hitting and pitching difficulty set on Legend because if I go into practice mode or franchise road of the show, I like playing on the higher difficulties to try to make it as hard as possible so I get as much practice as possible. Tutorial tips, if you're brand new to the game, you probably want these turned on, but I'm not very new to the game. I've been playing for a long, long time, so I always have my tutorial tips set to off. You'll notice L1 and R1, I'm on my PlayStation, I'm on the General tab. Right now, sticking in general, we're on difficulty, but if we press R2, it's going to set us over to decisions. This has things like auto fielding, auto throwing, auto base running, and these can be good. I would say for someone brand new to the game, maybe a younger player, it's good to have the auto fielding, auto throwing, auto base running, sliding, stuff like that on. If you want the computer to be doing things for you, it's pretty much what it sounds like auto fielding. If you have that on, then the computer is going to be handling all the fielding difficulties. If you have auto throwing on, the computer will handle all of that. So I typically just keep my auto fielding, throwing, base running, and sliding settings to off. The auto infielder jump reaction can be pretty nice to have that set to on. In online play, I think the fielder is typically, depending on their reaction rating, going to take one of the best first steps they can. The better their reaction, the better stuff they'll take. A lower reaction won't take as good of a step. These settings are typically referring to offline play. These aren't going to be affecting when you're in online I keep them on anyways, just because this is going to mimic a high reaction, but if you have this set to off, the infielders will not automatically jump on hard hit balls, they're not going to automatically dive on hard hit balls, and I just find it nicer to have those settings on. Warm up relievers, again, I don't think this one impacts online play either, but I always keep that set to off. I'm always forgetting to warm up my relievers. And then the auto defensive shift, I like to keep that to on because the CPU is going to call for me defensive shifts based on the hitter's tendencies. So that is the decisions tab here in the general settings. And then we also have the rules tab. And again, this is not going to impact online play. This is going to be stuff for franchise, road to the show, play now. 
modes like that. Umpire accuracy. I actually, for offline modes like Franchise Road or the Show, I like having these unpersonalized. Each umpire has their own set personality in MLB The Show, so you might start if you play enough to notice certain umpires' personalities. Maybe you're, you're using a pitcher in Road to the Show, and you might notice certain umpires might call more outside pitchers or inside pitches. So for playing Franchise Road to the Show, I find it the most fun to have personalized for my umpire accuracy but the other options are perfect and then average and this uses the mlb average to affect the strikes on on calls but i always keep my set on personalized brand new to the game this year is pitch clock you're able to turn this on or off in settings i'm just going to keep mine on same with injuries i'm going to keep that on i don't know if this is really something you need to mess with having this on or off Having ejections on, I think the only time you can get ejected is if you're beaning too many hitters, and that's going to be something that the computer is probably not going to do. I don't know, even if you have this setting on, if there's even a way for the CPU to be getting kicked out of the game. It says experience the ability for players to be kicked out of the game, but I'm not sure if it's even possible for a non-user controlled person to get their player ejected. Box, I like to have this turned off because if you have it on, then you'll notice, especially pitching out of the stretch, you actually have to wait for the pitcher to come set. And if you have that set to on, you're probably gonna be getting called for a balk a lot unless you actually wait for the pitcher to come set. Same thing with the umpire accuracy being personalized. I find it fun to play franchise road to the show, modes like that, having the umpire close play set to average rather than perfect, just so sometimes they do end up making mistakes. So I always set mine to average instead of perfect. And then for check swing appeals, I keep that on. It's nice going to the third base or the first base umpire on a check swing and seeing what they end up calling it, whether it's a strike or whether it's a ball. And then finally, for the general tab of our settings, we have the miscellaneous options, CPU pitch delay. I just keep that on normal. Auto save, I like to have that on. Player lock, I'm keeping it on skip to next appearance. Showtime opportunities, I usually turn this off. I don't really like doing the showtime opportunities when I'm doing Road to the Show, but they do have some new ones this year, so I might keep it on just to see how it goes at first. Base running opportunities, I find it more fun to do action pitches, but you can also have all base running opportunities. No base running opportunities is what I usually set mine to. If I'm base running, like I said, I do have it on action pitches. I typically keep mine on none. I'm not a big fan of base running and road to the show. And then the other option would be having them when there's an open base available. And then this is where the player lock CPU teammate hitting comes into play. If you're having it on open base or action pitches, it's going to be locked there. But open base, you get to change it to all teammate hitting or half teammate hitting. And then you have wind. You can keep that on or off. Franchise road to the show. I'm keeping it on. There's no wind in online play, so that doesn't affect that. So I just always keep it on. And then player lock fielding opportunities. This is where something's new this year. You have impact plays. Experience the most impactful plays for your road to the show players. So showtime opportunities. I'm probably going to have that turned off, but I'm going to be keeping my fielding opportunities on impact. Usually I'd be setting this to none, but for this year, I'm going to set this to impact and see what those new impact plays for Road to the Show are all about. And that's going to be it for the gameplay settings. I know it took a little while for me to get through everything. I just really wanted to be as specific as possible, really try to explain all my reasonings, why I'm using the settings that I do, just so everybody knows exactly where I'm coming from. So those are the recommended gameplay settings, the most important settings. We also have presentation settings. There's not a ton in here. The presentation mode, I always like having mindset to broadcast, so it's presenting a television style game, but if you wanna get through things faster, you can set it to fast play or hybrid, which is a little bit of a mix. I like mindset to broadcast. Pitch selection cameras. A lot of people I don't think know this is something that you can turn off. So before you choose a pitch or when you're choosing a pitch, sometimes it'll give you a really weird camera angle and you're actually able to turn that off. It's in the settings right here under presentation and it's the pitch selection cameras. If you do have those turned on for hitting, pitching, or always, you can choose the camera focus, whether it's batter, pitcher only, or all. And then you can also choose how often they happen, but I just always have mine set to none. I'm not really a big fan of the pitch selection cameras. 
Same thing with the presentation settings. I like mine set to broadcast. I like seeing the batter walk up. I also like seeing the in-game ticker. So I always keep that set to on. I don't use closed captionings, but that is something that you can turn on. And those are the presentation settings that I like to use. The big one here is the pitch selection cameras. I think a lot of people don't realize that this is something you can actually turn off in your settings. And after presentation, we have audio and video, player lock yells. I don't like mine coming out of the controller. I would rather have it in my main audio output. A lot of people I don't think might know that you can change that if you want to. It doesn't have to come out of the controller speaker. A lot of times I'll end up turning my commentary off. So this is where I do it, is in my settings. I just turn it all the way down a lot of times. I think I might keep it on at the beginning of the year just to start. You can change the road to the show player yells volume. You could just turn it all the way down that way. The PA volume, something you could adjust. Music volume for copyright reasons. I always keep mine all the way down. Sound effects. I always turn my sound effects way up as high as they can go. Crowd volume, I'll usually turn it up if I'm playing Road to the Show or Franchise, but if I'm doing online play, I typically keep the crowd volume a little bit lower. And then movie audio for things like storylines or they have some clips in Road to the Show. I usually just keep that where it's at, but you can adjust these as you find necessary. A big one though, sound effects volume, I like having that turned all the way up. Commentary volume, a lot of times I end up turning the commentary off, especially ever since they took map excursion out of the game and then you can choose if you want music reverb on simulate it being played through the stadium that can be kind of cool for something like franchise or road of the show if you have music you can set whether you want to hear defensive music and then continuous music whether it will play uninterrupted through the different game modes but i always just have all my music settings turned off and then the last thing is going to be mode specific i don't think i'm really going to cover anything in this but this is just where you can choose stuff like cross-platform play whether you want that on or off that's probably going to be the only big one for this video and then the others are going to be for franchise where it's lineups rotations 40-man roster roster moves free agency trades things like that so that's where that is but the only one that really i think would matter here uh, besides for franchise mode is going to be that cross-platform play you can just always turn that on or off here in the mode specific options and this settings video ended up being way longer than i expected but i just really wanted to try to be as informative and as specific as possible really explain to you why i'm recommending these settings here for mlb24 i hope you all enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe for daily videos and i will see you next time thank you so much for watching